say the name of Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let's change. I want to stop here. I want to change the sound. How many know what I'm talking about? We got a rhythm going here. But unless it resurrects, till Christ comes forth, is a new sound is coming from heaven. I felt it coming all the way over here. 15 miles, and I just felt the rhythms of heaven. God's praying on his spirit, he said, on all flesh. He's not talking, he's talking about flesh here, honey. We think he's talking about all people, he's talking about flesh. He wants to bring the spirit for us. Not the fleshly things, the spirit. It's not by might or not power, but by his spirit. Can anybody say amen? amen? And when the spirit comes, things are resurrected. You begin to have visions. You begin to have revelations. You begin to have understanding who you are in the days and times that you're living in. And everywhere you go, you feel Christ springing forth. Yeah. Springing forth. You hear what I'm saying? Springing forth. You're, you're catching things in the spirit. You're Even when things are mistaken, you can. I come out of the store yesterday and I thought, they didn't charge me right on this bill. I didn't look at it while they were adding it all up in fries. But I thought, they've overcharged me. Come on. You know these things. You don't have time to go back. We're not going to have time to go back and pick up anything. We have to go on. Go on with God every day. But here's what he wants us to do is utilize what he's given us. The Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. He didn't say, listen, the Holy Ghost. Man, the church is about in a ghost experience. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Woo! Come on. Come on. Let God rise. Let him arise inside of you. Let him arise. Richard, I want you to give me a little faster beat. I want you to give me a minor. Hallelujah.
can have a voice. He can be heard. My voice is like mine is because I've been screaming at a lot of devils. Get out of my way. That's all you have to say is get out of my way. But more than that, because I have so much to praise him about. How many of you know what I'm talking about? I mean, every waking moment of the day, he's working miracles, and many times we don't see it. I commanded all the traffic to get out of my way because I was in a hurry this morning. I was running late. I'm taking the train to you. All the lights were green for me. Come on, God's going to give you a green light. The government's talking about green. They don't understand what green means. Brother Shambok said, I'm a green, mean, living machine. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Nothing quiet about the spirit, honey. When the Lord spoke, when he died and he cried out, people came out of the graves. Come on, I'm telling you, you got a sound of eternity in you. You don't know this, Brother Gregor. Rebecca Wolf passed away. She died in 66. And I put a proclamation out to the Lord. I mean, listen, you get into these places where you ask strange things. You thought, where did that come from? It's hidden there, honey. And God wants to bring it out of you. Yeah. You've got to listen to me. The hidden inside of you. We're hidden in the glory. There's a glory that's going to come forth. Hallelujah. So I just said to the Lord. This is what I said to him. I said. Listen, I talk to the Lord like he's my best friend. You know, you can tell him anything. I said, Lord, you know when you gave a cry, people came out of the graves. And we don't know the story about all these people. But get Rick Renner, he'll give you some revelation on it. What happened to those people? Did they have a testimony? And I said to the Lord, you know your daughter, Rebecca Wolf. That was her name, W-O-L-F-F. -F. She was a preaching person. If anybody was an apostle, she was. And I said, Lord, that girl was an apostle. She took care of people. Do you suppose you could have a little earthquake? Because I just got a call from the center where she was. And they called for her because she wasn't able to call. And she, she was going, getting ready to go home. And they gave her the microphone. I said, what's happening, Sister Rebecca? She said, well, I'm on my way. Come on, when you know God, you're not saying, oh, we don't want you to die. Da, da, da. Well, I'm going to meet you there, I said. I said, I'll give you my last blessing. I said, we're going to miss you, and I wish you could have seen you, could have come here. But I said, I know you're ready to meet the Lord. And the phone was open, and everybody heard it there. And after she hung up, she died within minutes. But I said, Lord, could you have a little earthquake up there to honor her? And they had an earthquake in that city that day. Her brother called me up to tell me she passed. I said, yes, I got the news. And her brother was like halfway saved. <laughs> and I told him what happened, how I made that proclamation. You could hear him from California, honey. He laughed so hard, I knew he felt what I was feeling. Hallelujah. God honored her. That was the first time they'd ever had an earthquake and swim Washington State. Now, I know that's a little bizarre, but there's nothing that God cannot do. you got to get this in your spirit. There's nothing he cannot do. He's not going to change your hair pink, so don't ask him that. Don't ask for green eyes when you have blue eyes. He made you according to what he's already created. He knew how to put things together. Come on. He knew how to put the worlds together. The moon to come, the sun, the stars to shine. But he wants praise. Are you listening to me? I've made my living by praising God. Come on, by giving him what he wants. Yes, and he shows you what's in that voice, what's in that life that comes out of you every day. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Fifty years ago, he said to me, Ruth, your heart belongs to Judah. I decided to find out who Judah was. I said, Lord, I don't have any boyfriend named Judah when he said that to me. 
I'll learn out a little more about the Bible. He's going to send Judah first. At least I got a first place somewhere. Hallelujah. Come on, you got to get excited when God gives you a word. Search it out. Search it out. It might be a connecting word to what he's about to bring you into and bring you out of. Search him out. His words are yea and amen. He put them above his name. And he wants to declare to you eternity in a moment. Eternity. And I learned something new yesterday. Hallelujah. Come on, every day you want something new because his mercies are new every morning. I said, Lord, I said, when I was growing up, I said, there was an awe about your people. They had a look about them. I'm not trying to make you feel bad. I'm trying to make you know where it's good. I said there was something about their countenance. There was something about these people when they came into a room. Angels came with them. Hallelujah. Why? Because there were a body in that place where angels tread. Hallelujah. And I was talking to him. I said, you know, we need that look upon the church. You know what I'm talking about? Eternity. That look. And I said, what is it? We used to call it a light. And when I was a child, listen, I recognized that glory on the people. And I remember I'd go into the church and I had this aunt that she always wanted to kiss you right on the mouth. Just went in my mouth. <laughs> She'd come and laugh all over me as she kissed me. It was a joy. There was a love in these people. From knowing God. The more you know him, the more you love him. Come on. The more you understand his ways, the more you love him. That's what love is all about. And I said, where's the light? And I remember standing in front of those people and I'd cry when I was a child. I remember in front of Brother Helfen, I used to cry when I'd stand in front of him. He had such an anointing on him. And when he'd start to pray over you, you'd just start to weep. He, the hollow places broke up, the hollow places broke up inside of you. You might know what I'm talking about. Yeah. We need more. We need more prophets like that, and more pastors like that. Yeah. And I start crying. Any bad thoughts I had about him, I started repenting right in front of him. He said, "Well, I didn't know it. I didn't hear it. I remember that I repented many times. I had these thoughts I shouldn't have had. But then God gave me a new word yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I said, "What is it that's missing? The forever look." <laughs> The forever look that's on their countenance. From eternity to eternity, he's changing us. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Just different. Yes. That's why they don't like the Jewish people, because the Orthodox Jews have that same look they had in the days of Esther. They have forgotten who God is. Come on. You don't forget who God is no matter what's happening in the world. He's still God. He's still in charge. And what I'm telling you is this praise is going to bring the movements of God in the earth. Yeah. Hallelujah. It's praising him, lifting him up, adoring him, exalting him, Amen. magnifying him. I went to see my son. And he was happy to hear all about God. And then I heard him say inside, give me some space, mother. I heard him say it. I said, all right, I'll give you some space. I opened my mouth and said it. I won't talk anymore about Jesus. Later, I got him by himself. I said, you don't understand me. There's nothing else to talk about. That's right. There's nobody else to exalt. Come on, don't limit God. God's doing something every waking moment of your life. Yeah. But you find it, honey. You find it. There's an itch inside of you. Scratch it. Hallelujah. Something he wants to tell you. Something he wants to reveal. Something he wants to heal. Yeah. It's just like you go out and see the sun coming up in the morning. Come on. The darkness is dissipated. The light has come. He said, rise up. I want to meet with you. And I want to share my heart with you. I want to share my feelings with you. I want to call you sweetheart. <laughs> Hallelujah. We need a little wedding in the church. Falling in love with Jesus. Amen. Falling in love with Jesus is the best thing I ever did. Come on. 
It's the best thing I've ever known. There's nothing like love. It covers everything. Hallelujah. Come on. you got to get happy about this thing. <laughs> I'm not trying to be funny. I'm talking about eating honey. Honey. Eat of him. Partake of him. Glorify him. Glorify him. Now we got wonderful singers in the church. We got great musicians everywhere. I mean, they're they're just the best musicians there is. But that fine tuning of heaven has got to come in the song. That's right, Richard. Give me a little echo over there. That fine tuning of heaven has got to come into our soul. We're getting ready. How many feel like you're getting ready? Yeah. And I'm washing up, cleaning up. Standing up, straightening up. <laughs> Woo! I'm checking. I'm checking my identification with the Lord, proving whether I'm in the faith or not. Yes. Proving these things need to be spoken in the church. He said, "Find out. Find out. This is the time of finding out who you are." He saved the best for last. Look at you. I'm over 80. Anybody else over 80 in this room? 85? 86? We got one over here. She doesn't mind me telling. She's what, 88, 89? Maybe 9 is fine. Hallelujah. We don't get on the highway where we can go 89. Hallelujah. Come on, I'm trying to steer your heart. Because the man of God's going to speak some things into your life this morning. Amen. He's from Australia, so they're a little different. <laughs> from down under, you're going to hear thunder. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Glory to God. How many want to hear from God? Yes. How many really want to know what his heart is saying to you? Yes. Oh, I don't know. I better put on my breastplate. <laughs> Hallelujah. What I'm saying to you is God wants to awaken our hearts. Awaken our hearts. Wake up. Wake up, wake up, wake up. It's a new day, a new time. There's things around the corner we're not prepared for. There's something about to happen. I don't want to speak this to you, but don't think in doubt. Just give a shout. There's been a warning from Cindy Jacobs. We're not going into it. She said, be on alert. I'm a little aware of it, but we live in, in perilous times. Yeah. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Get a little penny house down here. <laughs> <laughs> yes. A little penny yeah. house. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> you've been through fire and you've been through rain. You've been to water. You've had baptisms. You didn't understand. That's what, that's what fire and water is, is baptisms. I've been to the fire. Okay, you're going to shine now. Hallelujah. Come on, you're going to shine now. The gold's coming. The glory's coming. The presence of the Lord is going to be so real to you. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Can anybody say amen? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Go watch the movie Fiddler on the Roof. <laughs> See that man when he's in the barn singing, talking to God. He's feeding the chickens and the cows, but he's shaking. Hallelujah. If you just see that movie, you'll understand a little more about the Jewish people and their culture. God has been putting out nuggets everywhere in movies for people to catch it. He's using the heathen to speak to the righteous. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're either groaning or you're too quiet. <laughs> you know, the dead say nothing. <laughs> I'm not trying to be hard on you. I'm telling you, I'm 86 years old. God's thrown me out there. He 
through Esther and Daniel and the Hebrew children out there amongst the heathen. I'm not saying you're heathen. And what I'm saying to you is God wants to take us into new territory, Amen. new places of the spirit, Amen. new understanding of the anointing on your life and the sacrifice that's been paid for us. Yeah. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And here's how I know. Because few people have ever watched the Passion of Christ more than once. Can anybody say amen? amen? Because God anointed Mel Gibson. He was crying out to God for his life. He's told that. He was about to go down. He said he didn't take his life because he thought he wouldn't be saved. He'd been through so many mishaps. And God gave him that to redeem him. He honored God enough. He said, I don't want to take my life because I don't think I'll be saved. He's getting ready to commit suicide. God gave him the movie to touch the whole world. Yes. Yeah. Come on, God wants to give you a revelation that wherever you go, it's going to touch people's lives. Yeah. Are you listening to me? Yeah. It's going to break up their spirit, break up those hard places. Amen. Why, why do you think God lets us go through these sharpenings? Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. The word sharpens. Now, Brother Gregor's outside, but I want to tell you, anybody know who he is? Yeah. Yes. yes. I've known him for 40 years. Yeah. He and his wife came to our camp and stayed for three years, and they bought an old car while they got him around, and I was going to Russia, and I didn't know they sold the car for my ticket to go there. Oh, wow. They're sacrificial people. Yeah. You know what a sacrifice is? Man, it's only older all the time. It's called a burnt offering. <laughs> Don't burn the toast. Just give him a burnt offering. <laughs> oh, Jesus, give them an experience they will never forget. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I've had dreams in the night, honey. I was late as a dream when I woke up. God was trying to reveal to me that burning that's inside of me. That awesomeness of God. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. We heard a message Sunday in our church where the Lord said, listen to me. I'd say pray to the Lord Saturday night about something very important to me. And Pastor, I got to preach on it Sunday morning. Okay. Come on. Yeah. He'll let you hear it. Yeah. He'll shout it from the house. Stop where he's trying to get to you. Yeah. And then he came down off the aisle and came right by my seat and spoke my name. And gave me the answer to what I've been praying for. He said, and he told me exactly what I've been doing in his messages. He was running down the aisle and prophesying over other people. He just went down the aisle and gave a word to people up and down the aisle. Said, Come on, when the fire of God gets it to you, you're going to run. You're going to run and not be weary and walk and not faint. Amen. You're going to feel like the eagle has restored life in you. As he said that. When your mouth speaks good things, when you announce who he is, you declare who he is. He said, I'm going to restore your youth like an eagle. Yeah. And there's going to be a sound on your voice of many waters. Yeah. And it's not rabbit trails when the preacher speaks. It might sound like it. But somebody in that audience has been crying out night and day from the Lord. And suddenly you take a rabbit trail and give the answer and you get back on the trail again. Yeah. People don't understand the anointing, how it works. Yeah. I know how it works. And I've seen the results. Come on, I got the results. There's not enough books. The results every day. Hallelujah. I get up in the morning, there's not a spring in my step, but there's a spring in my well. Hallelujah. Come on, are you listening to me? You got to get the waters pouring out of you. What are those dry places? Hallelujah. What are all those things that are not pouring out? Watch the Lord as he works a miracle. It's how we approach the Lord. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? It's how we approach the Lord. Declare who He is. He's my husband every day. Woo, what a husband. Woo, he can tell you things he can't tell anybody else. You look at that person, what's wrong with them? They got a secret. Come on, it didn't come on television years ago. It's always been there. He has a secret for everybody concerning who you are yes. and what he wants to do. Don't look at yourself as old. 
There's an ancient that days is older than all of us. Come on. And he's not dead yet. And he wants to come with life and life everlasting. Life eternal. Life. This body's going to pass away. But the spirit is going to be there. Come on. Come on, Richard. Give me some spirit music over there. Hallelujah. Some spirit music. That's right. Let me have some spirit music. Now, I read something in the Bible yesterday. Read something every day and get something out of it. I've never seen this before. It said in this day, listen to this. You better get this. That Zion is going to be the fire and Israel is going to be the furnace. Zion is going to be the fire. The church is going to be the fire. And Israel's going to be the furnace. I read that. It is not a new version. Hallelujah. <laughs> but there's revelation that's coming. Right now, it's the church and it's Israel. Come on, you better know it. Right now, it's the church and it's Israel. Amen. Glory to God. Declare and be glad and be happy that he's chosen you. He said, I've made, say, look at yourself. He said to us eight years ago in a prophecy, I've saved the best for last. Well, honey, this is the last, and we're going to be first. Yeah. Amen. You got that? We're going to be first. God's going to come and reveal some hidden things to us. He's going to hide us in a safe place. Glory to God. Every hand ought to be lifted up right now. Say, do it for me, Lord. Do it for me. Don't leave me out. I know you can have revival out me without me, but I want to be in it. Yes. I want to be in the move. Yes. It's not by chance that all these people are coming to Arizona. Right. God has chosen this this state as an arrow yes. for this nation. Yes. He has chosen this state as an arrow to hit the target. He said that. He said, whatever I do in Arizona is it's going to make a difference in the country if they'll awaken to it. Are you yes. listening? Come on. Yeah. We thought it was something when they just passed that strange law here. A 160-year-old law. They found it hidden somewhere. I want to tell you the Bible is full of the law. That's got to be revealed in our hearts. Yeah. I'm not talking about under the law. I'm talking about the fulfillment of the law in your life. Yeah. Of who he is. Amen. Amen? Yeah. Who he is. Thy will be done on earth as it is in I will be done. And when I'm talking about you, so do the heavens. Get your opera voice in the shower. Get your opera voice when you're doing the wash. Get your opera voice when you're working in the yard. Serenade the Lord. Yes. Glory to God. There's a river in you. Yes. A river. Let it come out. A new sound is going to come. A new sound. God's going to get ready to sound in the earth and everybody's going to hear who he is and what he's doing. Amen. Well, we've had some wonderful reports from the Lord this week. Whose report do you believe? I was in that revival. Do you know they asked me to come over? Did You You didn't know this. They call me up. I have to toot my horn a little bit, but not too much. <laughs> they called me up and wanted to know if I would have a telephone, I don't even know what they were talking about, a telephone conversation with Lance Warner. I said, for what? <laughs> yeah. What do you want me to tell him? <laughs> <laughs> and somebody graciously in this room, we went to hear Mario Morella. We went to one of the breakfasts and boy, he didn't cut any corners. It was a nice breakfast. Yeah. It had all the trimmings. The nicest hotel. And he said, we don't want anybody anything but to do what God wants. Amen. And somebody introduced me to him. His first words to me were, I mean, I'm kind of in and out of it. I didn't feel too good. And I went up before him. I didn't know where somebody was taking me. And he said, come with me. And I'm standing in front of him. And his first words to me, he said, you got a lot of stories to tell. I said, I do. I've written a book. He said, I'd like to read it. That's how, that's how it happened. He wanted a copy of my book. Yeah. So I got it to him. Yeah. And then I understand 
It was given to a person, he put it on the platform. I couldn't believe it. That's not the place to put it, you know, but it's, <laughs> anyway, the cover and everything on it. Listen, it's nothing that I've done. I don't even know how that book got accomplished or published, but it did. Wasn't anything out of my pocket. I never had to spend a penny. Come on, put your hands up. God wants to give you a little wedge of gold from his table. A little wedge of gold. The eternal worth of who he is. Now, I don't, I'm not looking for gold, but it says that Solomon had 25 tons of gold a year to run his, tons, no, not ounces, to run his kingdom. But he said in the last days, the anointing on man would be more precious than the gold of Ophir. That's the most precious gold. It comes out of Saudi Arabia, somewhere over in that area. God's going to bring it from the heavens, not from Saudi Arabia. Amen. He's going to bring perfection. This is what I'm saying. He's going to bring his beauty, his wonder, his grace, his holiness, his life in you. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> You gotta live on the hallelujah side. Hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. 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 Yes. hallelujah. Yes. We have a several testimonies I'm gonna give this morning before our brother comes and speaks. And I want you to get your heart ready and be able to give a little offering this morning, a little or much of whatever God is speaking to you for our brother. He's come all the way from New South Wales. I always felt like it was the nicest state middle of Australia. Because God has done great wonders in that. It's just something about the land, the atmosphere. Something is precious about it. That's all. I, I almost compare it to Israel at times when I've been there several times. No distance in God this morning. He sends you anywhere to get his point across, and he will. But we've had testimonies of the wonder of God. I've been praying for my son, and now he won't stop calling me on the phone. I'm serious. And I just listen. I thought, I don't have enough time for this. I just listen. Because I haven't heard from him for eight years. I just listen. Let him get it out. Whatever he wants to say, yep. just let him talk. Honey. Yep. They're going to come with a lot of baggage, but they're coming. Come on. Come on. Come on. They're going to come with a lot of baggage, but we can help them unpack it. Yep. Let that come from. Yeah, but anyway, Ramona called me and said she has an exciting testimony to give you. Anybody knows Ramona? Ramona's from Arizona. Yeah. <laughs> She's my friend. But I wanted to share with you, this is so wonderful. We're talking about the wonder of the Lord. But yeah. you get excited because he's going to do it for you too. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Can you say amen? Amen. Yeah. I mean, I've been jumping up and down. I want it, I want it, I want it. Come on, it's not that you got to be bold about the Lord when you want it. Don't be afraid to get excited about it. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise God. <laughs> Just briefly, um, most of you know me from here, as, and as long as I've known Sister Ruth, and most of you know that my daughter is in a lesbian relationship. So I've been praying for her forever, as well as I know many of you have been praying also. Okay, so yesterday, uh, let me just preface, I sent a video. You know, we can only say so many things to our children. So I sent a video to her and her partner. I'll call her her partner. And the video was about, what do you call it? It's um, in Psalms. And it just left my brain. But anyway, I, I sent this video, I'll get it. Presumptuous sin, that's it. Presumptuous, I love this. And the lady that was talking about it said she had never heard anybody preach on it except Wilkerson, who was the only guy, and one other guy that I, I don't know who he was. So 
And she, this woman, is a born-again, spirit-filled, tongue-talking Christian. And the Lord sent her to hell, not because she died, but it was because he wanted her to know about this, this sin that's in the church. All right. So I sent it to, to the girls. The, the partner actually watched the video. She calls me yesterday. Her name is Pam, if you want to write it down and pray for her still. And she is weeping, weeping, weeping with so much sorrow in her heart about her lifestyle. Now, Pam was brought up in a Christian Baptist church and was married to a male and had a child and then met my daughter, and that's how they got together. They've been together quite a long time. Anyway, uh, she's weeping, I get to pray with her, and we start talking about this uh, sin. She said, I thought that the Lord would forgive me. I said, he will forgive you, of course, but you have to change. You have to turn away from that sin. And so the Lord has been working on her heart for a long time. She used to actually go to our church and our pastor would preach about homosexuals, gay lifestyle. And I always thought, I always thought, I wondered what she thought. She never got up and left, you know, and I never poked her and, got, and said, you know, well, that's you, you're living in, in that kind of lifestyle. And I told her yesterday, I said, I never pressured you. I never pointed it out to you. I always loved you. And she said, I know, Mommy, I know you never did that. But I'm continually praying. But anyway, so that door's been open. The yeah. door has been open. Wow. And her and, and my daughter, they've actually discussed it. I said it's, now this is kind of confusing to me, because if they lived together as two women and didn't do the other thing, the sexual sin, I'll say that, um, does that mean they're redeemed? But they just have to repent about that and, and live as friends. So we, we discussed that. But anyway, I just want to tell you how wonderful God is. Yes. Never, never, never give up. You know, we walk by the Spirit, not yeah. by sight. Right. You cannot look at people's sins. And that presumptuous sin can be anything in a Christian's life. You know, infidelity, be married and, and have relationships. I know that that's going on in the church. It can be a bad habit, smoking and continuing to smoke and not giving it up because God wants a clean vessel, yes. a clean vessel. That means everything. But when I read actually the word presumptuous and she said, I just thought God would forgive me because he loves me and I love him. I went, yes, but you got to change. <laughs> Let me just see here. I, I think I wrote it down about the presumptuous. Anyway, that verse is in Psalm 1913, and it's a willful sin. It's an adjective, believing that God will forgive me and continuing to sin knowing it is wrong. It also says, keep back thy, keep back thy servant from, from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over us. Amen? Yes. Listen, we're all, we all have faults. I won't confess mine now, but praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. yeah. Hallelujah. When the sin is like darkness, and when God begins to remove it, the eternal worth begins to come out of you. The eternal worth is from eternity to eternity. The glory of the Lord being revealed. Amen? One more thing. We had Ruth Halfman. I remembered the first time she came to preach on the glory. Now, I've been raised in Pentecost. I've seen some things. Don't come telling me you ain't seen nothing yet. Yes, I have. <laughs> I've seen something. Yes, yeah. And it's changed my life. Yeah. Yeah. I grew up in Pentecost. 
We never went to a doctor. My father prayed for us and we got healed. We never had to go to a dentist. We kept all of our teeth well. We never had arguments in our home. Nine brothers and sisters, I don't remember ever fighting with one of them. Because we knew my father was the rod in the house. He took care of us. Amen? He didn't have to tell us he loved us. He took care of us. And Jesus doesn't have to walk around telling us all the time that he loves us. Because we see how he takes care of us. And when we get outside of that dominion, we get in trouble. But let the light come. Let the glory of the Lord appear upon you. Amen. The Bible says that his joy is going to cause your face to shine. John looked at him and his countenance was brighter than the burning sun. Why? Because light reveals. Hallelujah. Light, reve light reveals. Nothing is hidden from the light. And we need to tell him this morning, wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Come on, tell him, wash me. Wash me, Lord. Bring some lie soap with it, too. Get rid of all the lies out of my life. Hallelujah. <laughs> all the petty things out of my life. All the opinions, all the excuses. You said, why are you yelling at us? Because God's been talking to me. I dream every night. I have dreams every night of things he wants to work on. And I make my list a couple of times a year. I get pen and paper out. And I number, these are the things I don't like about myself, Lord. What do you think? Yes. One day he went, hmm. <laughs> I thought, oh, I'm not going to ask anymore. <laughs> if he told us the truth, we'd all be free. Come on. If he told us the truth, we'd all be free. The truth will make you free. How many want the truth today? Amen. How many want it? Yes. Hallelujah. He wants to bring a liberty into the church that we can worship the Lord in spirit and truth, that we can prophesy, that we can declare the oracles of God, yes. that we can have visions and have dreams. He said, I'm going to do it. I'm going to pour my spirit out. Your young men and your daughters are going to prophesy and your old men are going to have dreams. That doesn't mean you're necessarily old. It means the wise, like Moses, are going to have the dream. But the young, like Joshua, is going to carry out the vision. Martin Luther King had a dream. People are carrying it out today. Somebody's prayed for you. Every one of that you're in here, somebody's prayed for you. Somebody's brought you the word to bring you where you are. Thank God for them. Yeah. Their lives. Hallelujah. I thank the Lord for my spiritual mothers and fathers. We went to the camp. Brother Gregor, a girl from this ministry, went to our camp. I want to tell you, God's restoring there. She called me up and she showed me a picture. She said, guess where I'm at? She's an outreach pastor in this church. I said, oh, she's on the campground. She said, I was going to Richmond, which is right, it's right off the road going to Richmond. It's off the 95. She said, I felt to come over and pray. It's 18 acres. And the wells have kind of gone dry over the years. But there's been prayers that's been prayed that have not been answered. God hears every prayer that you pray, every thought that's in our heart. She said, Sister Ruth, nobody tried to stop me. I went on up to the campground and I drove into the tabernacle and I knelt down and I began to pray. Well, I had just talked to the Lord. Listen to this. We're good friends. I had just talked to the Lord two days before saying, Lord, are you through with camp yet? You say, what do you mean? It's a campground of 18 acres, but it has houses on it and rooms and they're air conditioned and they're nice. But the spirit of the Lord used to be there in a way that you would never experience anywhere else in the world. And I say that boldly. Because people could hear from God. They drove for miles to get a word from the Lord. Hundreds of miles. 
She said, I knelt down and prayed. And she said, Lord, are you finished with this work in this place? Surely there's prayers that has not been answered yet. You have to know the lives. You, you think about Kenneth Hagin, compare it to that if you want to. But these were people committed to the Lord. Brother Greer can vouch for that. It was the spirit was there of the highest order. This was last Passover. And I'm here to tell you that landmarks have been restored since then in that ministry. Guess what they're doing? You want to hear? Yeah. I'll tell you quickly. When I have a moment later. Everybody's got to show up for prayer now. They're going back to fasting. They're having Bible study every Wednesday night instead of a service. They're reading the Bible. And they're reading it every morning after prayer for an hour and a half. Yeah. Or half an hour to an hour. Yes. you got to establish some things. Come on. We just think, well, we'll just take a little off here. and Well, well this won't matter. Well, it matters to God. Because he's the perfect God. Yeah. Amen. He wants all of you. How many of you know that? You need to sing that song. Take all of me. And open up your hands while you're doing it. Lord, yeah. oh, why don't you take all of me? You think that's a Broadway hit, honey? That's a heavenly hit. <laughs> he wants everything that's in you and in me. Nothing is reserved for myself. Not my money, not even my clothes. I invited a girl to my house. We're in a, we're in a meeting. Come on, get to know the Lord. A lady turns around to me. She said, I want you to meet my friend. She just came here from Texas. So I met her. She was there for three days. And the Lord, right in my spirit, that second said, give this girl some clothes. And I touched her back on the shoulder. I said, you don't know me. But do you trust me? She looked at me. I said, your friend knows me. Do you trust me? Will you come to my house? I'm a mile away from the church. I have some clothes for you. She let out a scream. She said, I didn't pack anything to come over here because God told me he's going to give me clothes after I got there. So. I mean, this is all part of the gospel I'm talking to you about. I took her in my house and I just took the clothes like this out of the closet, took them into the living room. I didn't want to ask her if she wanted them all. But I said, pick what you want. Some of them, they were my, my favorite things. Another girl said she didn't have any shoes. Nobody ever gives her anything. You know her, but I won't name her. I said, come on to my house. I'm going to give you everything. <laughs> I went into my closet and took out seven pairs of shoes. and said, boy, that's a lot of shoes because when I was a missionary, you only had two pair. But I have a bad habit of buying shoes because they feel good in the store, and after I get them home, they don't feel good. <laughs> so I give them away. I don't sell them. I brought in seven pairs of shoes I said, how many you want? She said, I want them all. <laughs> I didn't tell her she couldn't have them. I said, take them. I, I listened. You got to make yourself bare before the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> make yourself bare. I said, take them all. Yes. Take them all. Come on, God's going to get in our closet. Yes. He's going to get in our closet. He's going to get in our lives. He's going to get until we know him in our spirit. Till we understand when we walk into a service what he's going to serve. How I many of you know what I'm talking about? How many want him to listen? He's about to serve. Now, I don't like cod liver roll. And I don't like anchovies, but they come with salads. Hallelujah. They give you some things to eat. What is that? He said, Taste and see that I am good. Come on, he wants you to taste to him. Amen. Taste to him. It'll be sweet in your mouth, but it'll work something in your spirit. <laughs> Don't throw it up. You say, where'd that come from? I saw that one day. I saw a girl throwing up all over the place, and I thought, oh, it didn't digest. The experience she just had with God, she didn't digest it. Now you're going to have to prime them back up, Brother Gregor, because I just killed them all. <laughs> 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 
We're going to sing one fast song and then we're going to turn the microphone over. Let's, let's just sing for Israel, okay? Can we do that? Yeah. Give me a minor key, please. Maybe we'll do the